And there had been, you know, there had been some speculation about whether or, might, or not they might team up at the end, and they do because you have Mecha Godzilla up your sleeve. And again, that was something people were 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 guessing, especially when the, the second trailer came out and there was a shot in the background of Mecha Godzilla at one point. That was a clue. But there's also the fact that it's Ghidorah related. That mm-hmm. is a big old twist that I didn't see coming. Can you talk about about that? When did you have yeah. that up your sleeve? Well, you know, like let me just first say that it's so relieving to finally be able to say Mecha Godzilla out loud <laughs> because I've had to for so long uh, keep that secret. Even though everybody kind of knows that he's coming and this thing, it's leaked out, you know, like yeah. in little ways through like toys and T-shirts and stuff. But you know. So I'm just going to get it out of my way and say Mecha Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla. Okay, you know, like it's like finally I can just say that um, yeah, yeah, because yeah. ultimately, you know, I have to say like you know when my first meeting with Legendary, like they they had a um, an outline for the film when I came on, uh, no script yet, but there was a writers' room that Terry Rossio ran, and so they had like a couple page outline of sort of like a beat sheet of what potentially the movie was going to be. And I remember I was in Alex Garcia's office, the, you know, the, um, the producer and, you know, he's given me an NDA to sign and, you know, uh, and he's just very casual, you know, because like, you know, Alex has done all the Godzilla movies and in, in Kong Skull Island and, you know, Pacific Rim, you know, he's been there and done it, you know, like he, it's not even a novelty to him at all anymore. Right. I was like, is there any other monsters in, in the movie? Is, is he giving me my NDA? And he's like, he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, this one's going to have Mechagodzilla in it and uh, blah, blah, blah. And then I was just like, what? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> wait a minute, wait, wait, Mechagodzilla is going to be in a MonsterVerse movie? Like, first off, I had no idea that that was going to be even a possibility because he seems so, like, insane, you know, to be in a MonsterVerse movie. But at that point, I was immediately like, you know, I mean, they didn't know this, but I was like, I am 100% on board with this. They, I mean, nobody has to convince me at this point to do this film because, <laughs> you know, like the idea of being able to do my own version of Mechagodzilla was yeah. so exciting and fun that, um, you know, th- that was almost as big of a draw as Godzilla versus Kong in itself, you know. So, um, but yeah, with that said, like the Ghidorah thing was cool because, you um, you know, like that was an interesting kind of development because it it originally wasn't, um, I don't remember that being in the outline, but uh, it actually came out of like a weird problem solving things with some of the, some of the main points in this script came from weird aesthetic ideas that we came up with that would be cool. And then they somehow worked them way into the, the main plot. So for instance, the Ghidorah skull, which is where you know, Mechagodzilla is originally piloted out of. That's where the electronics are, and they're interfacing sort of with psionic abilities and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, you know, like that actually came originally from we needed a way for the um, villains to be able to talk with the people in Hollow Earth, and we were like, well, how are they going to have a radio that goes down at the middle of Earth? And then we thought, oh well, maybe they took one of Ghidorah's, head, you know, his skull, and they've used they're they're harnessing the psionic energy. It was actually like my original assistant who came up with the the, the idea of like a Ghidorah skull being used. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, so we originally just thought of it as, as a big radio transmitter, you know, mm. and then that just kind of evolved into like, well, wait a second. Like, if we're going to do that, you know what the coolest place to pilot Mechagodzilla is going to be is from a big monster skull. And so then that developed into a bigger thing. And then it became an important plot device until... Later on, Mechagodzilla became a uh, kind of sentient being, you know, um, and because ultimately what we realized is that it was just way cooler for Mechagodzilla to be a character himself instead of just like a robot that's being piloted. So him becoming mm-hmm. Terminator style self-aware and killing off his creators um, ended up being a, a much more interesting approach because then it allows him to be another monster, not just a big robot. You know? Originally, there was a slightly different plot with the villains and the way they were dispatched was differently. And um, we we had to do a very like kind of surgical kind of five day pickup reshoot thing. And within that those five days, we we redid that scene. That was one of the days. And um, and yeah, it was just a matter of like, you know, getting rid of the villain in a really fun way and also just like immediately illustrating that uh, Mechagodzilla has already got its personality, you know, and. <laughs> Yeah. I, I love Mechagodzilla. I love that, like, like the the VFX team 
they they always said Mecha Godzilla was a dick, you know, like they said like that was the way they described him because like the way that he fights is kind of dirty, the way he kicks people, you know, and then of course like the first thing he does when he uh, you know, gain self awareness as he blows up the mountain and just immediately indiscriminately starts murdering like as many people as he can in the city. And then, like, he kind of laughs. You know, I like his yeah. like mechanical laugh that he has. I think that's super fun. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he kicks Godzilla's ass as well, which is, you know, he's a he formidable does. Well, that's dude. That's what he's designed for, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, and, and by the way, that, that fight, you know, just talking about like different fights, alternate versions and stuff. Mm. Um, that was probably the hardest fight to, to choreograph in the entire movie because, you know, A, we were trying to figure out, like, what makes Mechagodzilla Mechagodzilla, like, what are the cool things we can have him do? Um, mm -hmm. And ultimately, the fight ends up being a bit more one-sided, and, and we kind of ended up just going in the direction of Mechagodzilla is really designed to kick Godzilla's ass, and um, and he's able to really do some pretty amazing stuff once he's fully charged. Um, but originally, that fight had a lot more back and forth um, – you know, between the two of them. And, uh, but it just didn't feel right. It never worked. Like Godzilla had a couple more, you know, hits in on, on Mecha Godzilla, but it, it, it kind of just didn't work for whatever reason. So, uh, the version you see is a bit more one-sided, but it, it, it kind of worked, you know? 